You know what's worse than fake news? Bad news. I'm Efish, and I'm going to change that with the Conservation Wind Show brought to you by Aquaparel. My goal for the show is simple, to share all the positive news about our environment, to give the amazing people who are doing some extraordinary work the credit that they deserve, while uplifting and inspiring you, the viewer. And if I do, do me a favor and like and share my video. It really helps me out. You can also support my work by heading over to conservationwindshow.com to donate and get some exclusive content, gear, and other perks. Let's jump into the positive news. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch Cleanup is underway. A stranded baby whale shark is rescued in the Philippines. Over a two-week period, the SeaWorld Orlando Rescue Team releases 15 endangered sea turtles back into the wild, an environmental game changer in water sports, and more. First up, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch Cleanup. If you follow ocean conservation news at all, you may have heard the name Bouillon Slat. The now 26-year-old Dutch inventor first debuted his idea in a TED Talk in 2012. During this TED Talk, Bouillon revealed a solution that can use the ocean's gyres in order to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. In 2013, Slat founded the nonprofit entity, The Ocean Cleanup. This organization received millions of dollars in funding, which allowed for the development of several inventions that will clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch entirely in about 10 years, once all the systems are deployed. Here's how. By using the ocean's gyres, this plastic retention system that you see behind me acts as an artificial coastline. This system makes the extremely difficult job of concentrating the plastic so that it can be effectively removed from the ocean possible. And because it's using the gyres, it does not require power in order to operate it. This makes the efforts both affordable and scalable. System 001 B is made up of floats that sit on the surface of the water. Attached to the floats is a skirt that hangs beneath it, which prevents the plastic and other marine debris from escaping from underneath it. As the gyres move the plastic into position, the system collects and keeps it concentrated so that it can be effectively removed. It is estimated that a full-scale cleanup system rollout could remove 50% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in just five years. After fleets of systems are deployed into every ocean gyre, the ocean cleanup projects to be able to remove 90% of ocean plastic by 2040, as stated on the Ocean Cleanup's website. Now this is great news, but what about preventing it from entering the ocean to begin with? In October of 2019, the 100% solar-powered Interceptor 002 was deployed in Malaysia. This vessel is the first scalable solution to prevent plastic from entering the world's oceans from rivers and streams. According to their research, 80% of river plastic stems from 1,000 rivers. By 2025, the Ocean Cleanup aims to start tackling trash in these 1,000 rivers by developing an interceptor vessel into each of these rivers. This will significantly reduce the amount of trash that enters into our oceans every year. What are they going to do with all the trash once it's collected? Great question. Technology is the most potent agent of change. It is an amplifier of our human capabilities, Slat wrote in The Economist. Whereas other change agents rely on reshuffling the existing building blocks of society, technological innovation creates entirely new ones, expanding our problem-solving toolbox, Bullion said. All that technology and development of trash collection systems costs a lot of money. While Bullion has stated that his overall goal is to put the ocean cleanup out of business, which would mean a 100% clean environment, in order to get to that point, they need some more funding. So they're now working on creating products with the ocean plastic that they retrieve. 100% of the product's profits will be reinvested in order to fund their operations according to their website. You can donate towards their efforts and read more about their future plans on their website. I will leave a link to it in this video's description. A stranded baby whale shark is rescued in the Philippines. Around 6 a.m., a Donzel tourism officer in the Philippines discovered a male whale shark stranded on the shore of the beach. The approximately two foot long baby whale shark was in good condition despite the stranding. It is set to be released back into the ocean once documentation is complete. Once poached to nearly extinction, whale sharks are now protected worldwide. 126 countries agreed to Appendix 1 put forth by the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals. This vulnerable species now has protection from domestic killings or captures and their habitats are to be safeguarded. So now, in addition to the protections that several countries deploy, including the Philippines, this species is now protected at offshore hotspots to which they migrate. The SeaWorld Orlando Rescue Team releases 15 endangered rehabilitated sea turtles back into the Atlantic Ocean. 
when 10 critically endangered Kemp Ridley sea turtles and five endangered green sea turtles became victims of cold stunning in New England, SeaWorld Orlando stepped up to care for them. There are several permitted facilities in the Northeast of the United States that are capable of taking in sea turtle rescues. In order to ease the burden and ensure that there will be space for new patients requiring care during the colder months of the year, other facilities like SeaWorld can step up and help out. And that's exactly what the SeaWorld Orlando rescue team did. Not only did they rehabilitate and provide top-notch care for these 15 sea turtles, they did such a great job that all 15 were deemed releasable. Over a two-week period, the SeaWorld Orlando rescue team released the sea turtles back into the Atlantic Ocean in a thriving state. Since 1980, more than 2,800 sea turtles have been released by SeaWorld's rescue teams in collaboration with government agencies and partner marine life facilities. Now, I know that there is a lot of controversial issues related to SeaWorld, but they do a lot of good work that really gets any recognition. Speaking of conserving sea turtles, in 2014, a brewery here in South Florida called Saltwater Brewery created an edible six-pack ring for their beer. Their six-pack rings are 100% biodegradable and edible. To create the product, they used the barley and wheat ribbons from the brewing process. From such a small local business, this was huge news. The Saltwater Brewery's president, Chris Grove, said, we hope to influence the big guys and hopefully inspire them to get on board. Well, Chris, you have definitely caught their attention. In May of 2019, Corona became the first major beer company to adopt the edible six-pack rings. One of my favorite quotes by Mother Teresa as it relates to ocean conservation is, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Chris and the Saltwater Brewery team are a perfect example of this quote. Great job and thank you for paving the way. Next up, an environmental game changer in water sports. Ecovated Design is an American company located in New York. Their mission, they grow materials. Their most produced material, mycelium. Mycelium is the branching thread-like material that grows from fungi. This material can be grown and shaped into pretty much anything. And the best part, it's 100% biodegradable. Surfboards are typically made from expanded polystyrene or polyurethane. Both of these materials are derived from petrochemicals, which is a chemical that is obtained from petroleum and natural gas. If a surfboard breaks in any way, it breaks in half, the leash snaps off, exposing the inside material, etc., is pretty much rendered useless and gets thrown away. Unfortunately, the material that it is made out of will not biodegrade. With hundreds of thousands of discarded surfboards already in our landfills, Ecovated Design came up with a more sustainable solution, mushroom surfboards. So who makes these? While Ecovative Design is the creator of the material, California Surf Organics has been the pilot for the production of the end consumer surfboard models. With Ecovative Design's GIY or Grow It Yourself kits, this surfboard company was able to take the project the rest of the way, and the result is pretty awesome. I'll leave a link to the full video in this video's description so that you can watch it after if you would like to learn more. For this week's species spotlight, let's take a look at the axolotl. Also known as the Mexican walking fish, this neotinic salamander is an amphibian. Unlike other amphibians, the axolotl spends its entire life in the water. Most species of salamander go through a process called metamorphosis, where they lose their gills and they end up as land dwellers. The axolotl does not go through metamorphosis and therefore gets to keep its gills and look really freaking cool like a little water dragon. I absolutely love these. This species is critically endangered in the wild, even though it's thriving in captivity thanks to pet owners. So how did this happen exactly? Well, in short, while the development of Mexico City was occurring, the lake that this species is found in was drained, like quite a bit. With the loss of habitat and introduction of invasive species from aquaculture efforts in order to feed the residents of Mexico City at the time, this species dwindled down to critically endangered. So how did they end up in the average human's care? Well, this species has a unique ability to regenerate pretty much anything inside and outside of its body. They can even accept transplants from one another, including eyes and parts of the brain. Due to its abilities, it was studied by medical professionals. Along the way, I guess someone brought one home as a pet, and nowadays you can easily find all kinds of different variations of colors of this species from breeders. From what I've found, axolotl owners are super passionate about the care of this species, and they absolutely adore them. Their quote-unquote derpy looks and playful personalities make for a truly unique experience for their owners. They're basically water puppies that eat worms. One of my favorite groups on Facebook is the Axolotl Obsessed group. Lots of awesome pictures and super helpful, knowledgeable, and experienced keepers are in this group. For me personally, 
What is so fascinating about this species is that they are actually being repopulated in the wild. This is possible thanks to the knowledge of the breeders and the help from the universities in Mexico who are actively restoring their habitat and releasing new ones back into the wild. You can learn all about that in an article that I've linked below. Super cool stuff. To everyone who was featured in this episode, thank you for your hard work and your contributions to conservation. I hope I did right by your awesome work in this episode of the Conservation Wind Show. For you, the viewer, I hope that this episode uplifted you, restored some faith in humanity for you, and I hope that you learned something cool today about marine life that you would otherwise not have known. If I accomplished any of those things for you, do me a favor and like and share my video. It really helps me out. Also, let me know your favorite story from this episode in the comment section below. You can support my work by heading over to conservationwindshow.com to donate and get some exclusive content, gear, and other perks. As you may or may not know, sometimes social media doesn't allow all of a creator's followers to see their new content once it's posted. So if you would like to get these videos via email, you can sign up for my mailing list by clicking on the top link in this video's description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.